book summary Give and Take. Give and Take is a book written by Adam Grant where he shares a revolutionary approach to success and gives us an exciting perspective on the three different types of people in life, givers, takers, and matches. By identifying and assessing the other characteristics of each, Grant provides an exciting insight into who is more successful in life based on their approach. Adam Grant is an author and psychologist. Grant has authored three New York Times bestsellers, Give and Take, Originals, and Option B. He hosts the podcast Work Life, and his TED Talk on Original Thinkers and Givers, and Takers have received more than 14 million views. Give and Take, a revolutionary approach to success by Adam Grant is an exciting perspective on the three different types of people in life, givers, takers, and matches. By identifying and assessing the other characteristics of each, Grant provides an exciting insight into who is more successful in life based on their approach. With real-life examples, Grant offers plenty of helpful advice on navigating situations and getting the most out of them while contributing to others. Chapter 1 Good Returns, The Dangers and Rewards of Giving More Than You Get Success depends heavily on how we approach our interactions with other people. Every time you meet someone, you have two choices. One you can take as much as you can from them. Two or you can help them without worrying about getting something in exchange. There are three types of people when it comes to reciprocity. Takers, self-focused, they take more than they give. They think that the world is competitive and that to succeed, they need to be better than others. Givers, others focused, they give more than they get. They focus on other people's interests. Matchers, they give as much as they take and take as much as they give. In the workplace, givers are rare. In real life, givers are plenty. Givers make up the least and most successful people. Takers and matchers end up in the middle. When takers win, people envy them. When givers win, people root for them. In the workplace, a lot of givers become takers because they're afraid to be exploited by takers. By encouraging us to expect the worst in others it brings out the worst in us. Chapter 2, The Peacock and the Panda, How Givers, Takers, and Matchers Build Networks Networking helps you get Private information Diverse skills Power Extensive research demonstrates that people with rich networks achieve higher performance ratings, get promoted faster, and earn more money. Takers see networking as a way to ask people stuff for their own benefit. Givers see it as a way to connect with people and ideas. Spotting takers Takers are controlling with subordinates, submissive with superiors. Takers want to be admired, so they charm a lot. Takers don't care how people below them perceive them. They feel entitled to pursue self-serving goals and claim as much value as they can. Takers are all about themselves. They use I a lot. As CEO, they pay themselves much more than the average worker. Takers post self-promoting, self-absorbed, and self-important information on social media. Takers have more FB friends. Most people punish obvious takers out of fairness. You cannot create networks just to take something. Getting things comes as a result of a genuine desire to help. Givers don't count what they give their network, they just give, unlike matchers and takers that give strategically dash receivers then feel manipulated and obliged to give back, which they don't like. Matchers have smaller networks because they only give when they know they'll get something back. As a result, they don't jump at every chance to give. Givers get a lot in return because they have lots of weak ties and weak ties help more in life than strong ties. Dormant ties are people you used to know well but haven't talked to in three years or so. Reactivating them usually gives you a lot of value. Matchers and takers are hesitant to reactivate them. Takers don't want to be punished, and matchers don't want to have to do something in exchange for asking a favor. Chapter 3, The Ripple Effect, Collaboration and the Dynamics of Giving and Taking Credit Creative people score higher in dominance, hostility, and psychopathic deviance and are more takers than givers. Yet they cannot do anything alone. Cardiac surgeons, analysts, or architects need teams of people that assist them to really shine in their jobs. People who give their time and knowledge regularly to help their colleagues end up earning more and get promotions in a wide range of settings. When you give it away, you gain more in response. 
by putting the group's interest ahead of their own, givers earn the respect of the group. Make sure also to share valuable knowledge with your colleagues, so they can do the same with you. Make sure to give credit to other people, or they will hold it against you your entire life. In general, people overestimate how much they contribute, though. This is the responsibility bias. The experience gap is a bias that explains that we underestimate how much a state or emotion will affect us if we're not feeling it. To please people, you need to put yourself in their shoes and give them what they want, not what you think they want. Chapter 4 Finding the Diamond in the Rough The Fact and Fiction of Recognizing Potential Teachers that believe a student is better will behave with that student in such a way that the student will indeed become better self fulfilling prophecies. If you want your employees to succeed, you actually need to believe that they can. You also need to make sure they're motivated to achieve. You do so by making the task at hand fun to achieve. Some people, managers, teachers, keep on investing all of their energy into losers that will never succeed. Why? Sunk cost fallacy. This bias states that we take into account all of the efforts we have already invested into something when making a decision to keep on investing or not. But we shouldn't, as previous investment is often a useless metric. There are however three other reasons that compel people to keep on investing when they shouldn't. One anticipated regret, people fear they could regret giving up. Two project completion, they think they will finish if they keep investing. Three ego threat, they're scared of looking like idiots if they drop it. Takers are more likely to keep on investing due to ego threat, while givers aren't. Givers work harder and longer because they do it for the team. There is a connection between grit and giving. Chapter 5 The Power of Powerless Communication How to Be Modest and Influence People Takers are attracted to, and excel in, gaining dominance. In an effort to claim as much value as possible, they strive to be superior to others. They speak loudly, confidently, forcefully, and sell with conviction and pride. They display strength and power by taking as much space as possible. The more they try to dominate the audience, the more the audience resists. Dominance is a zero-sum game. The more I have of it, the less you do. The opposite of this powerful communication style is powerless communication. These people express doubt and rely on advice from others. As it turns out, projecting confidence and assertiveness does not always work in communication. It's better to be honest, transparent, and vulnerable as long as this is backed up by competence. People don't like incompetent people. Clumsiness reinforces the prestige of the competent, but destroys the reputation of the incompetent. When we hear a powerful persuasive message, we get suspicious. In some cases, we're concerned about being tricked, duped, or manipulated by a taker. This is why asking questions is much better. Will you go vote will compel people to go vote. The art of advocacy is to lead you to my conclusion on your terms. When you try to persuade people directly, they know they're being persuaded and they don't like that. When you ask questions, you encourage people to do what you want them to do, but only if they have the desire to do it already. Don't you want to buy a new computer? This question will work only if the person actually wants to buy a new computer. Chapter 6 The Art of Motivation Maintenance Why Some Givers Burn Out But Others Are On Fire There are two types of givers, those at the top, and those at the bottom. The givers at the top score high in self-interest and others' interest. That enables them to establish boundaries to not get abused. The givers at the bottom score high in others' interest, and low in self-interest. These givers often become depressed because all they care about is the results of others. And when others don't get any, they wonder if their work is actually useful. Self-interested givers though, are happy to do what they do for the sake of doing it, which makes them less likely to be depressed if others don't reach the results they're looking for. As a result, others' interested givers should look for work where they can have an impact. And self-interested givers should look where they would be happy to give. Overall, giving money to charity makes people happy which in turn makes them more productive which in turn enables them to earn more money. Chapter 7, Chump Change, Overcoming the Doormat Effect The only way to give while not burning out is to trust most people most of the time, and make sure not to talk to takers. Givers, when being taken advantage of because they're too timid to fight back in negotiation, 
should think about what the negotiation will bring for others in their own team. This motivates them to fight back. The gender salary gap isn't a gender salary gap. More than half of the men, 57%, tried to negotiate their starting salaries, compared with only 7% of the women. Chapter 8, The Screwed Shift, Why a Soccer Team, a Fingerprint, and a Name Can Tilt Us in the Other Direction. Another way givers can make sure not to get exploited is to encourage the people they give to to give to other people, that is, encourage others to become givers themselves. Why do people give? They give both for selfish reasons, it makes them feel good about themselves, and for altruistic reasons, pleasing somebody else. People are also more likely to give to people they share a common identity with, such as, fandom of a certain sports team, nationality, religion, name, etc. As a result, there are more dentists called Dennis than Walter. And Georgias are more likely to move to Georgia than other people. Furthermore, people will experience a stronger bond with people they share commonalities with, especially when this commonality is rare. Another way to get people to do the right thing is to show them the norm. If they take more than the average, they will be compelled to take less. A great way for everyone to have more is to run reciprocity rings, where each person pulls a request and asks if someone can help them, and everyone ends up helping everyone. In general, we underestimate the number of people that are willing to give or help us because we take into account the cost for them to say yes instead of the cost to say no. But the truth is that most people are happy to give. You can transform takers into givers by making the records public. But if you make them take a pledge, they will actually give less than they would have otherwise because they are generous, so they didn't need to give this time. Key Takeaways There are three basic styles of social interaction, giving, taking, and matching, aiming for a balance between giving and taking. Instead of trading value, aim to add value. Givers succeed significantly by recognizing the potential in others. Through vulnerability, asking questions, and talking tentatively, givers benefit from powerless communication to build prestige and influence. Successful givers are willing to give more than they receive and have ambitious goals for advancing their interests. Givers characterize success as individual achievements that positively impact others. Give and Take Book Review Give and Take by Adam Grant is a thought-provoking and insightful book that challenges conventional wisdom about success and the role of reciprocity in our personal and professional lives. Grant introduces three types of people, givers, takers, and matches, and explores how their approaches to giving and receiving help hinder their achievements. What sets this book apart is the extensive research and real-life examples that Grant uses to support his arguments. He presents a compelling case for the power of generosity and the importance of focusing on others' needs. As a reader, I reevaluated my approach to interactions and relationships, inspired to cultivate a more giving mindset. One of the most memorable parts of the book is the exploration of the five minute favor, a concept that encourages us to help others in small, manageable ways, ultimately creating a positive ripple effect. This idea has stuck with me and influenced my daily actions. In conclusion, Give and Take is an engaging and transformative read that will inspire you to rethink your approach to success and the impact of your actions on others. It's a must-read for anyone looking to create a more fulfilling and meaningful life, personally and professionally. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share. See you in next videos.